All right, you guys saw a lot of uh, content, a lot of footage of me over the weekend assessing athletes. Um, and I want to go into my process of when I'm looking at these athletes, I want to really give you insight as to what I'm actually looking for um, in a few areas. Obviously, presentation to me is, is a big part of this. If you cannot present a, a conditioned physique or your physique as best as you can, um, you're missing a huge part of a contest prep, okay? So many of us, myself included in the past, we gave so much effort to maybe the cardio, to the diet, to the training, and if you completely just do not address a presentation, you're really, you know, shooting yourself in the foot. So presentation's a big part of that. And when I'm looking at presentation, there's a few things that I'm looking for. One, are they displaying their physique as big as possible? Um, are they contracting the muscles within that shot that need to be contracted? For example, I'll give a few different examples of this. Nick, um, he has a little bit of an issue of connecting with his hamstrings and his back shots. So that was something that we really you just hit over and over and over again. Um, on his front shot, and that's something that we have a goal for his first pro show, on his front lat spread, fully getting his lats and his chest engaged at the same time is, is a challenge. We typically can get one or the other, but we have to get both. So those are the two things that we worked on with Nick. A couple of my other guys, um, one thing that I'm big on, and this is something you guys need to understand, when you're getting judged, the main thing that you're getting judged on right away are your quarter turns, okay? So really, really focus on presenting your physique as big as possible, creating as much taper as possible within your quarter turns. So with them, it was like flaring the lats properly, flaring the lats and then sitting the arm on the lat when they did their quarters. Just little things like that. And then for a, a few of my other guys, it was really contracting their chest in all of their front shots, you know, making sure that chest was contracted. Two of my guys have very, very good um, striations within their chest, but there was times where they weren't hitting it fully. So that's, I wanted to talk about this first because it's an important segue into the next part. And that is like, what am I looking for in terms of the skin, how the skin's pressing out against the muscle. So when I'm drilling these guys on their posing, and making sure that they're presenting and contracting the muscle properly, it's also up to me to make sure that that muscle's full enough to be able to be displayed properly. So when I ask them to hit their chest, and or are you hitting your chest properly, and they say yes, and I'm not seeing it fire how it needs to fire, that to me tells me that, okay, yes, they are doing it, or I can feel it, and, it, and it's moving, but it's not full enough to really display the full effect of that we want of that muscle. So visually, one of the things that I really focus on is how is the muscle pressing up against the skin? Um, and this goes through stages. So when you start to kind of really pull in the variables during the final week, you're initially gonna still have some water between the, the skin and the muscle, okay? So you have to get that water out. You have to get that water excreted. And once you do, then it's a, you know, it's a fine line of pushing the muscle balance up to be really pressing hard against the skin. And if you're not doing that correctly, you're gonna appear soft. And that softness could mentally you know, tell you or, or mentally make you feel like you don't have the proper condition. But in a properly conditioned body, you have to be full to display that muscle properly. So that's something I'm really, really viewing over and over again. Other signs of lack of fullness in athletes, like let's talk about their glutes, for example. If you have an athlete that takes pictures and, and you know that their glutes are in shape, and then as the show gets closer and you might start to manipulate water, you might start to manipulate diuretics, you start to see skin folds under their glutes, that's a surefire sign that they're not full. Okay, so you have to know, and, that, and that's what I'm doing, is I'm, I'm analyzing these athletes over and over to work on their presentation, to make sure that their condition is improving and their fullness is improving. Um, and then also just to make sure that they're conditioned enough to be able to pose on stage properly. Having that endurance to pose on stage. And then lastly, and this is kind of a twofold um, answer for you guys, but I do think that rest and reducing inflammation is a very, very important aspect of the final few days, and that's why we do implement more rest. That's why we pull back on the training. Um, but at the same time, when you're putting all this nutrients in, make sure that you're utilizing and moving the nutrients around through posing. It's very, very important. I've seen it many times where guys are doing this massive carb load and they just, you know, come, stand up and hit a most muscular in um in their room and they're like yeah i look great or I'm, I'm progressing as i should be but the reality is a lot of that food's not being shuttled around and that's when you hear people say that guy spilled on stage and the reason why people are spilling on stage is because they're not pushing that food through and utilizing that food through their carb load so then on stage when they're forced to do that 
that's when you start to realize, okay, maybe this guy over eight because he came in sharp, looked great as the posing rounds, as the comparisons went on, he faded. Well, why did he fade? He could have faded because he was too flat and then you also most certainly can fade because you're too full and you haven't really pushed and, and utilized that glycogen. So then as the glycogen starts to go into the muscle, that's when you can have a spillover effect from that. So that's really what I'm looking at and analyzing when it comes to why am I posing these guys so much? What am I looking for? Um, is it just because that's what everybody else does? And the answer to that is no. You know, there, there's specific reasons why I'm doing it. And a lot of it, this is, I, I put a lot of stress on myself because you have to know that you're continuing to trend in the right direction when it comes to these guys, the final few days, making sure you're making those right judgment calls. So again, for me, it comes down to presentation. It comes down to posing enough to making sure that you're utilizing the carbohydrate intake that you're putting into the body or reducing the water balance. And then it also comes down to how's the muscle laying against the skin and, and can they properly contract and are they showing the full depth of what that muscle is. So those are the variables that I consider. Um, hopefully this video is helpful for you guys, whether you're a coach yourself or possibly analyzing yourself when it comes to your own progress. Um, and then the, the other thing that I've, I do a lot, whether I'm in person or not, I still like to have pictures taken of every round that we do, simply so I can continue to put those pictures side by side, especially when you have a lot of guys like I had this weekend, like you can kind of get lost in the fact that, okay, this guy looks good now, but how did he look two hours ago? Are we moving in the right direction? Are we getting harder, drier, fuller? Or are we starting to reverse that process? So if you continue to put the picture side by side, that can really help you with analyzing everything and making sure that you're heading in the right direction.